All right, YouTube, this is Detroit's HPTV coming to you out of Detroit. It's Thursday morning, and I got a video for you. And the name of this video, when I found it last night, it was about Joe Biden and Kamala Harris creating a coalition of black voters for the election. This is one of the most divisive videos I've ever seen from these politicians, and it's Kamala Harris and Joe Biden. Now, all of a sudden, black Americans have become so important in this election cycle. But the manner in which they're pandering and going about it is so disingenuous, we have to change this narrative. Now, I've never asked my subscribers for donations or support, but I'm gonna ask you today to donate to Detroit's Black Thought and Action Collective out of Detroit. The description with the cat, the, the, the cash app is in the description. And it's called Detroit's Black Thought and Action Collective. And we need to change this narrative. And if you wanna support the channel and support getting Joe Biden, Kamala Harris, and Rashida Tlaib out of office, I'm going to ask you today to donate to this cash app because I want you to watch this clip and I want you to see exactly the level that they're going to with their pandering and their misinformation. You're going to see so many lies, so much politics that is going to be nauseating to you. So let's get into this clip so you can see what I see. This for fair use under the 1976 Copyright Act for commentary and educational purposes. Let's watch our uh, politicians and see and listen closely to everything they say. This is going to be a long one. Stay to the end. And I want to thank all the incredible leaders who are here with us today, in particular our young leaders. It is so good to see you all. I also want to thank the members of the Congressional Black Caucus who are with us this afternoon. And everyone else. Now look who's there. The Co Congressional Black Caucus, Congressional Black Caucus, who haven't done anything for Black Americans in decades. They're only Black in name, but they out here and they finna support all these lies that you finna hear. We got to change this narrative. Listen closely. Thank you for being here. So in 2020, Black voters in Philadelphia and across our nation helped President Biden and me win the White House. Yes, you did. And in 2024, with your voice and your power, we will win again. Philadelphia and Joe Biden we have a fighter, a leader with skill, vision, determination, and compassion. With QuickBooks, you'll gain confidence in your books. See your whole business. A leader who keeps his promises. As a candidate for president, Joe Biden gave his word that we would fight to address some of the biggest issues facing the black community, and we have delivered. First lie, the black community 
is in so much chaos. I'm almost 60 years old, and this is the worst I've ever seen the black community. They have done so much damage, they have almost destroyed the black nuclear family. They pushed every agenda but a black agenda. They pushed the LGBT agenda. They pushed the immigrant agenda. They pushed uh, a transgender, your children agenda, but they've done nothing for black Americans. They've done nothing for white Americans, Hispanic Americans, but yet they are trying to have a coalition of black Americans for the swing states. Michigan being one of the swing states that Joe Biden needs to win. He can't win up north in Cadillac in the northern parts of Michigan. He's counting on winning Detroit. That's what he's doing. So his propaganda and his rhetoric is directed specifically at us with all his misinformation. We cannot stand by and let him push this narrative to people who are uninformed. We have to get our message out that these people are dangerous. The black community cannot afford another four years of Joe Biden's administration. We will be annihilated. We will be replaced. In 2020, Joe Biden and I vowed that we would lower the cost of health care like insulin. For far too many years, too many of our seniors with diabetes had to make the awful decision about either filling their prescription or paying their rent. And black Americans are 60% more likely to be diagnosed with diabetes. So we capped the cost of insulin for our seniors at $35 a month. And under Joe Biden's leadership, Finally, we took on Big Pharma and finally gave Medicare the power to negotiate drug prices. We also took on the issue of debt, which makes so many people feel like they can never get ahead. Take, for example, medical debt. We are now making it so medical debt can no longer be included on your credit score. So that medical debt cannot impact a person's ability to get a car loan, an apartment lease, or a home loan. In 2020, we promised to forgive student loan debt. She said they promised it, but it never happens. Every month I get a letter from Nailnet telling me how much to pay for student loans. And I'm a senior citizen. My student loans should be forgiven at this point. But every month, faithfully, they contact me about student loan debt. So what is he talking about? He's going to also talk about the jobs as if we don't recognize the level of unemployment in our communities. We have to change the narrative. They are lying too much and it's going unchallenged in the black community. We have to come out against them and tell the truth to the people who may not watch uh, Fox News or may not watch MSNBC, who may not watch these news people as they spread their propaganda. Continue, watch this to the end. Wait till you hear Joe Biden. as vice president to spend a lot of time with our president. And on this subject, I remember sitting in the Oval Office with our president, Joe Biden, shortly after the United States Supreme Court struck down our initial plan to forgive billions of dollars in student loan debt. A different leader, a different kind of leader would have thrown in the towel, not Joe Biden.
And I'm gonna tell you what he said that day. I'm gonna tell you what he said that day. This is not over. So we kept fighting. And so far we have forgiven over $165 billion in student loan debt. On average, more than $30,000 $30, per person and $70,000 for our public servants like nurses, firefighters, and teachers. In 2020, we promised to take on the issue of the epidemic of gun violence. Knowing that today in America, Gun violence is the number one cause of the death of the children of America. Not car accidents, not cancer, gun violence. We took on the issue knowing black Americans. She brings this up as if black people in America don't know that we are leading the country, the nation in homicides due to gun violence, due to them alienating the police. These are the same people who are talking about defund the police, but yet they tell you they have a problem with the violence in our communities, but they want to defund the police. Really? Listen to this double talk. Wait for Joe Biden are 10 times as likely to be the victim of gun homicide. And I'll tell you, I have personally held too many hands of mothers and fathers as I attempted to comfort them That's a after lie. their child was killed by gun violence. That's a lie. Sure so to address this crisis, under the president's leadership, we passed the first major gun safety law in nearly 30 years. to strengthen background checks. And again, I sat in the Oval Office with the president where he sat down with Democrats and Republicans and appealed to their better selves. And that's why for the first time in 30 years it happened as a bipartisan deal. We created the first White House Office of Gun Violence Prevention, which I lead and has now invested $1 billion to hire mental health mental health counselors in public schools to help heal the mental trauma of gun violence. And Philadelphia, in all of our work, the president has been guided by a fundamental belief. We work for you, the American people, not the special interests, not the billionaires or the big corporations, but the people. And in November, all the victories we have won and everything we fight for every day is on the line. You know, Donald Trump once asked black Americans, I'm gonna quote, excuse the language, what the hell do you have to lose from a Trump presidency? And sadly, we all know too well, when he was president, Donald Trump tried over and over to get rid of the Affordable Care Act and to take health care then from millions of black Americans. Year after year, he proposed cuts to Social Security and Medicare so that so many of our seniors would be deprived on what they rely on to live with dignity. And then he handpicked three members of the United States Supreme Court, the court of Thurgood, the intention that they would overturn Roe v. Wade, and as he intended, they did. And today, one in three women and more than half of black women of reproductive age live in a state with an abortion ban, a Trump abortion ban. And if he wins a second term, I promise you he's going to go even further. So all of this is to say, 
who sits in the White House matters. It matters. For, it matters for the people of America and for people around the world. As Vice President, I've now met with over 150 world leaders, presidents, prime ministers, chancellors, and kings. And I cannot tell you how many times one of those leaders has pulled me aside and talked about how much the world relies on us and on Joe Biden's leadership. His defense of democracy, his commitment to the ideals of freedom and liberty and equality, and his willingness to fight for these ideals. And as the people of Pennsylvania know, our president does not only know how to fight, he knows how to win. We beat Donald Trump once and we're going to beat him again. And now it is my honor to introduce our president, Joe Biden. I'm going to interject after Kamala. Kamala is a person who didn't even consider herself black until she ran for vice president. Before then, she considered herself Indian, like her parents. This pandering and the narrative is shocking. I see a lot of people, they be in my comments, and some of them be hostile. You're like the black people, y'all gonna go for it again. Y'all gonna be tricked and duped again. No, we're not because we understand that if we deal with another four years of Joe Biden, he will completely destroy the nuclear family and the cohesiveness of the black community. He's still Jim Crow Joe. He's still the one that created the crime bill and the drug laws. He's still the one that said we would turn the school into racial jungles. He's still the one that said, we don't vote for him, you ain't black. And look at him in front of these black people trying to unite a coalition of uninformed black Americans. Say it ain't so. It's good to be almost home. I just live down the road a little bit. Thank you, Kamala, for your partnership. And there's a partnership. And how about another round of applause for our great vice president? It's just so nice. It's great to see so many friends, including my fellow Scrantonian, Senator Bobby Casey. Bobby, where are you were? There. there you are. Mayor Parker, Lieutenant Governor Davis, the Chair of the Congressional Black Caucus, Steve Horsley, members of the CBC who are here tonight. I'm a, if I introduce everybody, I'll be here all night. But look, I couldn't be here thinking of our dear friend, Congressman Dwight Evans. He's recovering, he's going to recover, he's doing well. And joining us are so many state and local officials from across the country including the guy from my father's hometown where he was born, Baltimore, Maryland. They say it down Baltimore, not Baltimore. I want to introduce you to the mayor of the Bear, the governor of the great state of Maryland. Where are you, governor? In case you have a nose, it looks like you can still play, too. <laughs> it's great to be with you, Gov. Civil rights and community leaders from all across the country. Folks, for anyone who wonders whether their vote matters, remember this. Because Black America voted in 2020, I'm pleased. Have, have a seat if you can. Have a seat. Because Black Americans voted, 
Kamala, our president and vice president of the United States, because of you. That's not hyperbole. Because you voted. Donald Trump has defeated former president. And with your vote. This man was an adamant segregationist. This, and to see the turnout of black Americans, considering Joe Biden's true history and his true record is shocking. It tells you the level that they are uninformed. It tells you the need to galvanize and change this narrative and not sit on the sidelines and just say, okay, it's gonna take care of itself because it won't. He's pandering like that in Philly. He just left Detroit speaking for the, at the NAACP and was given a lifetime achievement award. But the, I'm telling you, it's, it's, the, it's the baby boomers, the older people, they're still going Democrat. These young people, they're coming out to vote and they need the right information. And we need to do more than just talking. That's why I'm asking you to support this channel, support Detroit's Black Thought and Action Collective so that we could change the narrative and push our own narrative. We cannot be gadded by these liars. This is tricknology at its highest. because I got so much help when I was running for the Senate in Delaware from Philly. Black voters place enormous faith in me. I've tried to do my best to honor that trust. Staying true to the values set that we share got me involved as a kid in the first place. Everyone's entitled to be treated with dignity and respect. Faith and family are everything. And we leave no one behind. Folks, I know it's natural to wonder if democracy, the democracy you hear about, actually works for you. When justice is denied, how can it be working for you? When promises are broken, how can it be working for you? When you have to be 10 times better than everyone else to get the same shot, how can it be working for you? I get it. And I know there's a lot of misinformation out there. So I came today to speak the truth. The truth about promises made and promises kept. Remember when the pandemic hit? When 20 million people were out of work? <laughs> when businesses and schools shut down? Emergency rooms were overwhelmed. Black folks were hit harder than anyone else. When Trump was president, he said, he said this, he took responsibility for none of it. He said, it's none of my responsibility. When I came to office, I promised we'd do everything we can to get us through that pandemic. And that's what we did. That, folks, was a promise made and a promise. The first thing he did when he got in is cut unemployment for the people that was unemployed. He took it from $600 that $600 that Trump had gave and broke it back down to $300 and then stopped the stimulus altogether. Facts. Cap. Racial equality is center of everything I do, because I vowed I would have an administration look like America. Because you voted, we're invested more than ever in the black families and communities. A promise made and a promise kept. A promise we'd start to reconnect black and brown and overlooked neighborhoods cut off by highways in the 60s and decades of disinvestment as a consequence of it, including here in Philly. But we're changed now with the Recovery Act. But they, in, in the, right now, you see all the construction going on on the highways around here. A promise made and a promise kept. 90% of the people that they're hiring to do the new constructions are immigrants, undercutting the local citizens in the cities. In Detroit, they're redoing Mac. If you ride down Mac Avenue and look at the people who are fixing the roads, they are all immigrants. As if they got some inside track to employment. Look, 
I said I remove every lead pipe in America because every child can drink clean water without fair brain damage. We're doing Flint, Michigan still has no good drinking water. His whole administration, they have never corrected the problem in Flint, Michigan. And a promise made and a promise kept. I promise you'd also take the most significant action on environmental justice ever. Remove the legacy of pollution that smothers fence line communities. Because every child, every American deserves to bring clean and fresh air. We're doing it. A promise made and a promise kept. I promise to access affordable high-speed internet because now internet is just as important as it was in the days of Franklin Roosevelt. Electricity was generations ago. We're delivering now because no child should have to do their homework at McDonald's when things are shut down. Sit in the parking lot with their parents to get it done. Another promise made and another promise kept. I promise to protect your health care. I protected and expanded the Affordable Health Care Act that was Obamacare. Is this still Obamacare? Saving. Saving millions of Americans an additional $800 a year in premium. We didn't like Obamacare. Do you know that when they had Obamacare, all you had to do was file your tax return to see how much you got penalized but not picking one of their HMOs. They didn't even give you an option, forced you to deal with Obamacare, and if you didn't, you were penalized, and they took your money. I mean, Joe Biden didn't say anything to black people as if we cannot think. And folks, the Affordable Care Act is still a big deal. Yeah. As Kamala just explained, senators, but debated this, but we finally got it done. We debated this. Seniors with diabetes are now paying $35 insulin instead of $400. I'm determined to make that apply to every American, not just seniors in the second term. Yeah. We're capping. The bill we've already passed. We cap total out of pocket costs for drugs for seniors beginning next year at $2,000 a year total, including. Cancer drugs that cost ten, twelve, fourteen thousand dollars a year to pay no more than two thousand dollars a year. Yeah. Promise made and promise kept. And by the way, not only saves people money, it saves the taxpayers. Guess what? A hundred and sixty billion dollar cut in the debt because Medicare doesn't have to pay those exorbitant prices. Folks, one of the reasons I got started one of the first time. And subsequent times in Delaware is because of the best HBCU in America, Delaware State. Have you noticed that everywhere he goes in his black people, that HBCU becomes the best one? Morehouse, then he, then he was like a uh, champion for Kamala's HBCU. The level of his pander, he's so very disingenuous. You know for a fact we cannot trust this man for another four years, period. Kamala says there's some school down in Washington. QuickBooks helps you build your business while simplifying your finances, saving you over 30 hours. Anyway, HBCs are incredible institutions. <laughs> but they don't have the same endowments as other universities. The phone research centers and do so much more. Because you voted, I kept my commitment. We're investing $16 billion, the most ever in the history of America. $16 billion. We grow America. We'll save America money. A promise made and a promise kept. I'm keeping my promises that no one should be in jail merely for using and possessing marijuana. He has never apologized for the drug laws and the crime bill that he created that still has created broken families and destruction in the black community. You got to really check his record. Don't just listen to what he's saying. Because right now, 
He is lying. I pardon thousands of people incarcerated for, for mere possession of marijuana. No, he didn't. Promise made and the promise kept, and for the record, should be expunged as well, I might add. Folks, it wasn't easy to get a lot of this done. In fact, obstacles every step of the way we face. For example, Senate Republicans blocked the George Floyd Justice and Policing Act. But didn't stop me from signing a historic executive order requiring key elements of that bill for federal enforcement. That is, banning chokeholds, greatly restricting no-knock warrants, creating databases for police misconduct, and so much more. But we're still, and we did it with the support of George Bush's family, and we're going to finally get it all done. A promise made and a promise kept. I promised we'd beat the NRA, and we did. I signed the most significant gun safety law in nearly 30 years. A promise made and a promise kept. And by the way, I'm going to go back and once again ban assault weapons in America. I did it once. If that's the case, why is gun violence the biggest reason of young men and women losing their life? in the black community, in the history of this country. Look at the statistics coming out of Chicago, Detroit, Philadelphia, right where he at, Atlanta, California. Look everywhere those Democrats are and look at the level of gun violence. Yeah. Supreme Court blocked me from relieving student debt, but they didn't stop me so far. I relieved student debt for nearly 5 million Americans. A significant number of black borrowers. So you can chase your dreams, start a family, buy your first home, start a business, and so much more. And guess what? It grows the economy. It strengthens the economy. I'm going to keep it going. Promise made is a promise kept, and we're speaking of, speaking of the courts. Because you voted, I was able to keep my commitment to a point first black woman on the United States Supreme Court. Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson. He voted Ketanji Brown Jackson and put her on the Supreme Court. She was asked by Congress to give the definition of a woman. She was a woman who was sitting in Congress and asked by another woman, what is the definition of a woman? And she was confused and was refusing to say what the definition of a woman is. This is these people. They want to transgender your children. Think about what he's not saying. He's not mentioning immigration. He's not mentioning Palestine. He's not mentioning none of the stuff that he really did. The promise made and the promise kept. And I appointed more black women in the federal circuit courts than every other president in American history combined. Every single president combined. We appointed 200 black judges to the federal, I mean, judges to the federal bench. And guess what? The next president, they're going to be able to appoint a couple justices. And I'll be damned if they're not going to. Look, if in fact we're able to change some of the justices when they retire and put in re really progressive judges like we've always had, tell me that won't change your life when just Trump justices are already cutting voting rights, overturning Roe, decimating affirmative action, and so much more. We're going to let that happen? We can't. No, we, we really can't. This is coming from Jim Crow Joe. Crying Bill Joe. Open the borders, Joe. We, I mean... Is anybody buying this at this at this late stage in the game? Everybody know that he's been losing the black vote ever since this election cycle started, especially losing the vote of black men. Because black men know they made more money under Trump than they did Biden. So he comes out at this late hour knowing he's losing in the black community and he's panders and he lies and it goes unchallenged that is why i'm asking my subscribers if you stand with me 
Make your donation to the Choice Black Thought and Ash Collective. The cash app is in the description. We gonna get out and change the narrative and tell the truth on these liars. Now let's talk about Trump's MAGA lies. I don't have an hour, but we're gonna shorten it. Trump thinks got a percentage of all the pandemic relief checks alone. It's a lie. The truth is the Congressional Black Caucus got that money fast. When Tom and I came to office with the help of the CBC, passed legislation to deliver more checks in the pockets of millions of Americans, including black Americans. $1,400 checks from the American Rescue Plan we passed. And then $300 a month per child, per family, through the child tax credit, which cut child poverty in half for black families. You heard I mentioned the 300? It was the 300 because he cut the 600 that Trump was given. Trump has said three hundred dollars wasn't enough, and he made it six hundred. Biden is proud that he cut it down to three hundred, and he's telling you that it went to three hundred. If you were going on living and working, or however you was existing during the pandemic, I know you remember that Biden knocked it down to three hundred, then took it away, then took people off unemployment, so he could say that unemployment was low. stated in the second term folks trump continues to lie by saying black unemployment was at a record low on his watch the fact is record low unemployment happened on my watch we're going to keep it going black small business starting up at a faster rate in 30 years because of what we've done the racial wealth gap is the lowest it's been in 20 years because of our effort a promise made and a promise kept i announced Significant, most significant housing plan in 50 years it includes first time home buyers tax credit building millions of affordable housing to bring rents down new data shows 40 percent cut in the gap between home appraisals and majority white communities versus those of color communities of color you know the same exact builder on either, either side of 95 build the same housing if it's a black community it's lower the value you see how he started losing it? You see how he's going off script? You see the, sen the senility coming in? Do you really think Biden is even running this country? That administration is being ran by globalists. The speech he's saying is well doctored to exclude anything that he's actually done in the community, such as opening them borders. And you never got a black crime bill. Pay attention closely to what he's not dealing with. For the very day it's built, ends up being lower than the exact same house across the highway in the white community. We're doing everything we can to right that wrong. And guess what? We're taking on corporate greed to bring down the price of gas, food, and rent. Eliminating jumping instead of getting charged 35 bucks for an overdraft, it's three dollars now, not 35. The bottom line is we're investing more in black America than any previous administration history has. We're open more doors for economic opportunity, including it's almost over, but you can see where he's going with this. As I've said, I'm almost 60 years old, and I've never seen in my lifetime, the condition that the black community is in in these last four years of Biden. That's a fact. He's pandering the way he's pandering because he needs these swing states and he needs the black vote like he needed it before. So he comes in front of you and he tells you these lies as if you don't realize how many evictions you're seeing. You don't realize the price of food. You don't realize how you can't even live on one job. But nobody's challenging it. So 
like I said to my subscribers, if you watch this far, go into the description, donate to Detroit's Black Thought and Ash Collective. We're going to get out here and we're going to galvanize the black vote. And we're going to tell the truth on him and change this narrative that he's trying to push before November. So signing to you out of Detroit. It's Detroit's HPTV. Keep your head on a swivel. Pay attention. Salute to all patriots. Like, share, and subscribe.